Welcome to Introduction to Procedural Asset Creation, Lesson 3. So in Lesson 3, what we're going to do is cover the aspects of finishing up our model so we actually have geometry and not just points and lines. Um, and so to do that, what we need to do is actually start to uh, create some geometry, some actual polygons for this skate ramp, okay? And so what we need to do uh, to start that out is create another line. And now this line is going to become our width line. So you'll notice that we've got our length and height and our ramp circle, but now we don't. We need to have a width to it all. So I'm going to tab, type out line. I'm going to call this my width line. Alrighty. And the width is going to be set in the x direction. So you can always use the little gizmo down here in the bottom left hand corner of your uh, view. Okay, or the the 3D view over here. All right, so I need this line to point in the X direction. So I'm going to type in one for the X direction and zero for the others. Okay. And I'm going to hit the blue display flag on this guy. All right. So you notice now that we have a line that's pointing in the X direction. But if we turn back on our grid, I want this to be created from the world center as well and move outwards from both sides. Currently, if I were to change my distance, it's only moving out in the positive x direction. So to do this, we're going to employ a new expression, okay? And it's relatively simple to set up. What we can do is we can actually right-click on the distance parameter, and we get a pop-up menu. Now, this allows us to actually copy data off, or copy parameters off. So what I can do is I can say copy parameter, and I want to paste this relative reference into the origin of the x direction. So once I do that, you'll notice that the line is being moved out the same value as distance. And if I were to move this out in different distances, you'll notice the line is going to move out in different distances too. So what does this mean for us? This means if we take half the size of the distance and make it negative, it's going to actually put this line in the center of the world. So if I multiply it by 0.5, and then multiply it by negative one, or just type in a negative sign. What I have now is a line that gets created from the center. All right. Very cool. And that is exactly what we need. Because what we can do now is we can actually copy our final geometry here, or our final point in line, our blueprint, of our ramp to both those points that we have on this line, just like we, what we did with the height line, okay? But before I do that, what I wanna do is I actually wanna make this a closed polygon. Currently, you'll notice we, we don't have any faces. We can look straight through this whole mesh or this whole set of points and lines, all right? And that means what we need to do is we need to actually join this stuff together. Currently, we're just merging it all into one. All right, so we can try to use a join node. That's one way we can do it. So let's go through that process. And you'll notice that right when we do that, um, all the other points that were duplicated at all these intersections here are now merged into one. So you notice that if I zoom in really close here, I have two points there, two points there, and two points there. So I turn on the blue display flag for the join node. You'll notice I get a single point, a single point, but I still have two points here. And that's just because it didn't close the polygon for us with the join node. All right, to, in order to do that, we have to actually use an add node. All right, I'll drop that down. I'm gonna delete the geometry, but keep the points. So get rid of the lines. And then I wanna go into the polygons tab of our add node, select the by group tab. And what it's gonna do is it's actually going to draw a line through all of the points that you have. And then now we have a little check box here that we can actually set to make it closed. And once we do that, we have a polygon, but ba bam, just like that. So now we actually have a piece of geometry that we can use. Alrighty, but you'll notice that I'm still getting two points down here. So to clean that up, I'm just gonna do a simple fuse node and that will take any point that is either right on top of each other or close enough within this tolerance distance right here and merges them into a single point. So now we actually have a single point down here on our bottom corner. And our vertex order goes from zero to 11. And everything is looking groovy. So now we're actually set up to copy 
these two points, all right, to each other. So let's do that. Let's actually drop down a new copy node. All right, so our width line is going to be our template. So these are the two points I want to copy this polygon to. So I'm going to put that into the template. And then this is the geometry we want to copy. So I'm going to put that into the primitives to copy. And ba-bam, there you go. We now have the beginnings of an actual ramp geometry or game mesh. All right, but you'll also notice now that we actually have both of these sides to our ramp, and the face is actually facing in the same direction on both sides. Now, we actually need to reverse this one particular side of our ramp. All righty. And now inside of Houdini, you work with points, okay, and you work with primitives. All right. So you notice when I turn on the primitive flag over here, okay, I actually get the number of that particular primitive. So this primitive is zero and this primitive is one. So what I can do is I can isolate these out using a delete node, just like we did over here with our length line when we wanted to copy our height line to it. All right. So what I want to do is I want to isolate out each one of these faces so I can either reverse it or, or just leave it the way it is. So to do that, I need a delete node. So let's drop down a delete node. <clears throat> and I am going to delete selected set to primitives and I'm going to delete one, the primitive with the ID of one. So type that in and now we have that, just the one that's not facing in the right direction. So to make it face in the right direction, I'm going to hit tab and start typing in reverse. Alrighty. And now that will reverse basically the normals of that piece of geometry. Alrighty. So what I can do now is I can actually copy off that delete node we just created. Okay, you'll notice we still have that same polygon, but this time I'm going to say delete non-selected. And that gives me the all the polygons that aren't, that don't have an ID of one. All right, so now we're going to keep that side. So what we can do now is we can actually merge those two guys together with the merge node. And ba bam Now we have everything all set up for us perfectly. And now we can dynamically control the width of our ramp using this distance, the width line distance. All right, pretty cool, huh? All right, so now let's actually uh, create the ramp sides here and the back and the bottom, all that stuff. All right, so to do that, we can actually create, we can actually utilize the previous two polygons that we created before we deleted and reversed the one side, okay? Excuse me. <laughs> So to do that, what we can do is just use a skin node. So I'm going to type out skin. I'm going to feed that into the first input of my skin. And ba bam there you go. We have geometry. Beautiful. And that was pretty simple, pretty straightforward. So all we need to do now is merge this with our two sides. And we've got a skate ramp, people. Look at that. Beautiful. All righty. So we're not completely done just yet. What I want to do is show you how to uh, create a little bit more um, interesting looking shapes. And I also want to introduce a new node called the clip node. So the clip node allows us to actually clip off pieces of geometry. Alrighty. And then what we can do is we can utilize uh, the color nodes to actually give those different pieces different colors. We can start to learn a little bit more about grouping our geometry. So let's, let's get into that. Alrighty. So let's, let's actually utilize a clip node. So I'm going to hit tab and put down a clip node. Alrighty. There we go. And what I want to do is I want to clip off the sides. All right. So I need a clip node that points in the X direction. And there you go. So you notice now that we only have half of our ramp. And if I take if I come up here to the properties for this clip node, I can actually decide which side I want. And also one of the features of the clip node is that it actually has a interactive handle or gizmo. So if you bring your mouse over into this 3D viewport over here and hit enter, you'll see that we actually have an interactive gizmo that allows me to pick the direction. Okay. 
but we don't need to do that. Because we are creating procedural assets that need to update in real time, we need to come up with ways to mathematically um, generate the, the shapes and geometry that we want. All right. So what do I want here? What I want to be able to do is actually just clip off just a little bit of a portion of this particular ramp. And so to do that, I'm going to utilize the BB box function again. So in my X direction, what I want to do is I want to get the total X size or the total X max. Okay. Of this particular ramp. So it's the complete value. All right. Or the complete end of that bounding box in the positive X direction. That's what we're looking for here. So I'm going to type in BB box. <clears throat> dot dot forward slash we're going to get the previous node which is merge two okay then i'm going to type in d x max bam we don't get anything look at that and that's just because now our clip node is at the complete end of our whole ramp so if i were to take all the geometry below the plane i have my whole ramp visible okay so what i want to do then is subtract a, just a little bit so I'm going to say minus 0 0.1. And what that does is it then gives me just a little tiny strip. All right, and that's perfect. That's exactly what I was looking for. So I just want that little perfect piece, a little extracted piece like that. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this to make a duplicate. And now this piece is going to retain everything below it. All righty. We'll save this guy for later. And now I need another clip node. So I'm going to take this source mesh here because I want to get the same outline or same section of geometry, but from this half. Okay. So I'm going to feed the result of the last clip node, this clip two into clip three here. And again, I want to do a clip in the X direction. Alrighty. But this time what I want to do is go in the negative X direction. So again, I'm going to go to merge two. All right, then we're going to do D X min. All right, so let's look where our clip is. So when you bring up a gizmo like this, you can actually hold down the space bar so that you can still rotate. And then if you want to get rid of this gizmo, just hit escape on the keyboard. Enter brings it up, escape makes it go away. And then holding down space bar and tumbling allows you to rotate the scene. All right, so we have our clip in the X direction and it's at the complete X minimum, all right, of our whole object with relation to the merge two node up here. So what I need to do then is add the same amount of value to this X min. So I'm gonna add 0 0.1 and then take everything below the plane. And you'll notice now that I have exact same section of geometry pulled off okay so in a later lesson we're going to show how to make that dynamic so that a designer or artist working with this digital asset or procedural asset inside of unity can change that width Alrighty. all right so i then just need to copy this off again make a duplicate and i want to take everything above the plane and that actually is now the center of our ramp Alrighty, so that's good. So if I were to actually drop down another merge node and merge all three of these guys together, you can see that we have, oops, excuse me. You can see that we have all the pieces back in place, but we've clipped this out. Now, why is this useful? Well, what we can do is we can start to assign different properties to these different areas. And this will come in handy when we want to start to give these different sections of geometry, different materials or different substances within Unity. All right, so let's actually get it set up for that. So I'm going to create another merge node here. And what I want to do is actually take the two sides that I have and I'm going to color them. So I'm going to drop down a color node type in color like so all right and what this allows me to do is add vertex color to a particular piece of geometry all righty so that's good 
I'm going to do the same thing with the middle part of our ramp. Actually, I don't need a merge node just yet. I just want some color. Alrighty. So drop down another color, color node, and I'm going to make it a little bit darker. All right. So that's perfect. So I'm going to drop down a new merge node, and then we'll just take the result of those two color nodes and feed that into our merge node. And what we have is a more interesting object. Alrighty. So that is pretty much that. There's one more thing that I want to do. I actually want to cut off the first part, the first lip of this. So again, what we're going to do is we're going to create another clip node. Okay, so I'm going to drop down a new clip node like so. And what we want to do this time is actually put our clip in the Z direction. Okay, so I want to change this so that it points in the Z direction. So that's one. And what I want to do is actually just move it in just a little bit. And because we created it from the world zero, all I need to do is type in a value of 0 0.1. All right. And we should get all the geometry that's below. And you'll notice that we went the wrong direction. Okay. So this has to be a negative. There we go. So if I type in that negative value, I get that first lip of that ramp. So that's perfect. Alrighty, so again, this is actually going to go into our merge node for our outline color. So I'm going to actually name this color node to the outline color. And this is going to be the wood color. Alrighty. So then I need to copy this off and change it to everything below. That way I get the actual ramp area and just move this connection to that output. So that way we are coloring just that portion. So now we, what we've done is basically outline the ramp. Just because in you know skate parks they do this a lot where they they outline the edges of the ramps, and I think it's just so the skaters can actually see the ramps a little bit better. All right, so that basically wraps up the creation of our game geometry for our ramp. Uh, we will be getting into more of the technical details now of getting this skate ramp over into Unity. All right. So I'll see you guys in the next lesson.